Alright, so say, dude, yep. um, being a Texas guy, trainer and all that stuff, you guys are pretty well adjusted to humidity. Yep. Uh, what is your advice for someone that isn't so acclimated with humidity? Uh, one thing I would like to say is uh, heat acclimatization is pretty specific to humidity. So you can go somewhere that's hot, that has a high temperature, but it's not the same as acclimatizing as somewhere that's both hot and humid. And it's personal rider to rider difference, but some people have a much more time, harder time acclimatizing to the actual humidity. So the absolute temperature might be lower, but the humidity is higher, so they can't uh, lose heat through evaporation. So some people have a harder time with that. Most of the people I know would rather have it hot and dry so their sweat can evaporate, so they can lose heat that way, uh, versus having the sweat not evaporate when it's humid. Um, to your body, it's just a matter of heat stress, the total heat stress. So temperature, temperature can go up, humidity can go up, or temperature could go down, humidity could go up, or the opposite, temperature could go up, humidity could go down, and the heat stress to your body is the same. So in terms of actual hydration while we're working out, the same rules apply. I mean, basically once you start exercising for any duration, I would say longer than say 20 minutes, you're always playing like a game of catch up. Um, you're never going to replace all the fluid that you do lose, especially in motocross because you can't drink while you're actually riding a moto. Um, I mean, I don't want to call it a trick, uh, but you know, the amount of salt that you have in your system uh, affects the total body water that you can hold. Um, so you want to, and again, it's individual response, but we do experiment with salt. Uh, how much salt we have in our sports drinks will determine how much water that you're holding before your event. Again, it's all individual. So I know kind of roughly what Andrew can intake in salt and how much water he can hold. Again, uh, you got to consider that when you're holding more water, your blood pressure is going to go up, and the way your body wants to relieve that is you got to pee it out. So it's kind of a game of timing and how much water you can hold and when you're going to have to go to the bathroom. But if you experiment, you can figure it out and actually start your moto with more more water than you would hold uh, if you didn't do anything. So that's kind of a trick that we'll use. There's people, like especially guys on the West Coast that are going to the res, they'll start riding the weeks before and they switch. Does that work or is that just like a lifestyle? No, um, I had a professional client that uh, asked me about that and he comes from a state that doesn't have humidity and I did a bunch of research a couple years ago and the only thing that I did find that showed any improvement to the humidity tolerance is when you're immediately when you're done working out you go right from your motorcycle or bicycle right into a sauna. It's the same temperature but really high humidity. So uh, this person actually did do that and it did help him uh, once he got to the East Coast and it was more humid. So that's the only trick that I do know that works. I'm not a big believer in the sweatsuit thing at all. Um, because of the humidity, you know, your body being specifically adapted to that humidity. So that's the only thing that in my research um, I know will help if you're like a person who lives somewhere where you can't have that kind of humidity. There's a lot of debate on what sports drinks to drink. Uh, I mean, you guys probably have your own personal blend. Yeah. Um, for the average person who doesn't want to drop a bunch of coins, have to have their own blends and stuff like that, or drop a bunch of money at GNCC, what do you think? Stuff? Yeah, I'm a big believer in Simplify um, because you're kind of playing this game of eliminating variables. So if you are using your sports drinks, and we do use them, um, I know. So one thing that is has been known for a while is, is, is if your sports drink is 6% sugar solution, uh, that's kind of the maximum sugar solution you can have and still have it absorb uh, equal to or not better than water. 6% sugar solution will actually absorb faster than water because for every mile, molecule of glucose that you pass through your intestinal wall, it drags water with it. So most of the commercially available sports drinks uh, that are worth anything are exactly at 6%. And then all the other things like the sodium and the potassium and the electrolytes, uh, I like to keep it super simple. Uh, my personal favorite is Scratch Labs. Um, everything in there is naturally based, even the flavoring is made from real fruit. Uh, there's you know a handful of ingredients and you know what they are. And again, it's made at 6%. It has a lot of research behind it and cycling for the amount of sodium. Um, if you go to their website, they're even somewhat educational on their website, so I like that company. I've talked to the owners and the formulators, and uh, I really believe in what they're doing.
Yeah, so another thing that we do, and again, uh, not to sound like one company, but Scratch Labs, the founder, uh, actually has a book called Feed Zone Portables. Um, instead of using commercially pre-made bars that where the food content in them is somewhat dehydrated, uh, we make our own like convenience foods for working out. So we use rice cakes and stuff like that where the foods aren't dehydrated. So the actual foods that we're eating while we're exercising contain all the water that they normally would. So that helps us stay hydrated. And again, we play with the sodium. Um, again, it's very individual. I don't want people to run out and just start, you know, pounding salt. But if you experiment in training with all the timing and everything, you can manipulate the salt in your food so that you hold more water directly before your event. And the time windows of those things are pretty short. So it's not like we use salted food all the time. We only use salted food directly before uh, long, heavy training outdoors or at the races like today. I study recovery a lot and for you know forever it's been like hey get carbs get you know basically get real food into you as quick as you can within a 30 minute window of when you stop exercising. Um, some new research has come out that I just found out a couple weeks ago at a conference that when it is hot uh, not only for recovery purposes but for uh, blunting you know exercise to make sure immunity goes down and for blunting the immune response it's actually more important to get your core temperature down as quick as you can. It's even more important than the food uh, when it's hot. So uh, the priority of what we do for recovery immediately after a moto or a hard training bout has changed for me this summer. Um, when it's hot, instead of worrying so much about cramming that food into them, I uh, try to get their core temperature down either by putting them in water or getting them inside the air conditioning. Uh, that, in the latest research, uh, promotes recovery and blunts the immune response even to a greater degree than getting the food in right after you're done. So that's important.